mystery that cannot be explained. An enigma that defies reason. A surprising and unexpected answer. To encounter such a mystery firsthand may change your life forever. Face to face with the greatest riddles of the ages, the world's most profound mysteries reach out and touch your life in ways you never imagined possible. Extreme Mysteries. Chuck Sellier, production artist extraordinaire, producer of the UFO Diaries. I'm really curious to get into the UFO Diaries, the show, the series that I made that I think you have an interest in. Oh, a big interest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is it that's so funny about this series? Because to me, I find it the most incredible ever documentary I've ever seen for showing some revealing things that I've ever seen on a documentary. Well, let me give you the backstory. Let me give you the backstory and bring you up to speed mm -hmm. on how the series came about and what was going on. Right. German television approached me and they said we would like to do a series on UFOs, and I'd like to call it UFO Diaries because that's what it is. It's basically a diary of everything we know at that point. Now, uh -huh. this was, you know, in, uh, I think, around 1990. The, uh, the way series goes is, uh, uh -huh. you know, you, you talk about them in 1990, and they finally get all done in 93. You know uh -huh. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this whole set was done in a Masonic Lodge in Salt Lake. It had some pyramid stuff in it and some globes and some different things that we were able to use in augment. And we did it in two versions. I did a, what you call an American or English version, and I used Michael Flynn was the host, who's been the host in many of my shows up until right now. And the Germans brought in some German guy who uh, is big in German television that was interested in UFOs, and they did the German version sort of uh, side by side with us. I never really understood what he was saying because he was always talking in German, and <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, so we sort of did ours and they did theirs. But we did all the research and all the compilation, uh -huh. and Lee Shackelford and I wrote every one of the episodes. We filmed all thirteen uh, host sequences in two days. We put out thirteen episodes on thirteen UFO subjects that gave the audience a clear picture of the whole UFO spectrum from the first one spotted in the 40s. The planet Mars is next to our own, the fourth world counting out from the sun. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. I was on uh, UFO Diaries. Set late one night, uh, there was major lightning going on, and I had three big risers in the air. Face on Mars, mysterious pictures. With crew members with lights lighting the night. Mm -hmm. And we flew in uh, many of the experts and photographed them in Salt Lake City in a Masonic Lodge. Those that we couldn't get to fly in, I think we made two or three trips out and interviewed and photographed the, the experts that couldn't come to us. But even those documents, when it comes to the actual technologies that they were involved in, these really cutting-edge technologies, are very ambiguous. They can be interpreted in several ways. And we had a few more scenes to get, and the studio wanted us to continue. And so I started praying for no lightning to hit my people and hit my equipment, things like that. Uh -huh. And I got back this amazing message that Chuck you're not using your talent properly. You're not putting out the right messages. Hmm. And that affected me deeply and greatly. So after we wrapped that meaningful message-oriented show, I said, I've, I've got to do something more meaningful in my life. And so I began to evolve into what I feel I am today, where I am doing Lost in Revelation radio shows that I feel are extremely meaningful, extremely helpful to people, and, and I hope entertaining at the same time. Now, the other thing is, I'm not a young guy anymore, and you'll discover as you get older, you, you start worrying about what is the meaning of life and what is your place in life and yes. what have you done, and that probably has to do with it as well.
Well, I'm still learning myself, you know. I still feel I've come a long way and my brain and thoughts are more focused and attuned to those very questions and especially these very issues that help them to come to these questions, you know, because this is where it's a part of us, it's, but it's much bigger than that and literally in a lot of cases out of this world. I won't dwell on this, but I just want to say that uh -huh. God has been good to me and yes, I sir. attribute all of my talents and capabilities to Him and I'm extremely thankful for, for all of His blessings. And I hope that I'm, you know, able to continue to do shows that help people and show them things are a problem or a mystery for them that they're bothered by. UFO Diaries. Dr. Hoagland, face on Mars, mysterious pictures. In the region designated as Sidonia. And uh, that it, it shed some light on things. And then that's what I have been done in, doing in recent years. Yes, incredible. I see that. The fascination of the faces on Mars for me and, and, uh, and my fascination with Richard Hoagland who's been the, the big mover and shaker in all of that. Secrets of our most uh, favored <laughs> by all UFO diaries which we will get into <laughs> some about. Keeps people coming back to learn and interest you know to conceive to think and you do put that out and you've done it to me over the years on <laughs> unwittingly knowing who you were. <laughs> There's certainly two ends to what I'm doing, and one end is I'm a member of the International UFO Congress, and I attend their convention in, uh, every year. I usually have several staff members with me there every year. And on the other end of the spectrum, I attend the National Religious Broadcasters Convention every year. I've spoken there several times, and I'm a devout uh, Christian. Christian. And so, I, you know, I'm, I'm sort of looking at all the mysteries of life and trying to shed some light on, on at least some of them. Exactly. While you explore and find the answers yourself that God leads you to. Right. The planet Mars is next to our own. The fourth world counting out from the sun. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. Ultimately, I believe that that's for a purpose. When that, that lightning thing there, that epiphany, if you will, was the Spirit of God in placing in you to where He was wanting you to go. And, I, and I agree. I, with I, that. In, well, I'm sure because I could feel that because I, I can relate to some of that. But hey, I, I do my best, and you know, I just ask God for the blessing to you know to continue that. I mean, well, it's not an easy road even in this. Boston Revelation UFO die. Mysterious pictures. The political climate, this, uh, you being involved with. Mostin. Revelation. UFO diaries. Mysterious pictures. Scene that you know that there's politics involved in this big time. Oh, yes. So, oh, yeah. you know, there's an old cliche that politics is 99% perception. It doesn't matter if something is true. If politically people perceive it to be true. The Martian revelator. And then. The Martian revelator. Act upon that belief. <laughs> <laughs> that Boston revelation UFO diaries. Mysterious pictures can make it true. So, you know, it's not far-fetched out there, and all these listeners are well aware of that, but uh, there are some, you know, new listeners and stuff, but people that really don't know much about this at all because of the politics itself, that the political tie sort of binds. Well, there certainly is a lot of politics in UFOs. UFO diaries. You know, there have been many, many people uh, and some very hard-working and famous people work on UFO diaries. But I'm not going to try to tell you I'm an expert on Boston Revelation UFO diaries. Mysterious pictures. But I would say that it's a fascinating thing. And I was able to go face-to-face -face with the guy that was in the radio station. The Martian Revelator. The guy that was in the UFO diaries in the region designated as Sidonia. Dr. Hoogland. I mean, I was face-to-face -face with a lot of these people. Clearly, clearly something happened in the Masonic Lodge. Think about this. Think okay. about it. Scientists require usually three sources, and it's just so darn odd that year after year after year, the, the Martian Revelator invents these new Boston Revelation UFO diaries. Mysterious pictures. And on and on and on. And I just have been constantly mystified as to why someone, Dr. Hoogland, can't come clean on what happened in UFO diaries. In the region designated as Sidonia. In the Masonic Lodge. And the answer's got to be awfully frightening. 
You know, I mean, right. I don't know if you remember, uh, I'm, I'm sort of showing my age, but before Billy Carter went into office, he acknowledged that he had seen UFOs, and he even said that yes. when he got in, he was going to check out the UFO phenomena when he became president. After he became president, the press tried to ask him about it, and he wouldn't answer any questions. You know, and I hear rumors. I don't know this for a fact. I have a buddy that worked with President Clinton, and he said that President Clinton tried hard, that he was very personally interested in UFOs, and tried hard to find out about them, but kept going up against stone walls. So, you know, I, it must be something pretty phenomenal that's got to be kept from us, because we know the edges of it. We know something went on. Politics is 99% perception. Well, my point is that these presidents, I don't think, are in control of this stuff. I, I mean, agree. look, I, I'm a dramatic writer, and so this is probably just a dramatic scene in, in my head. When the image was first recorded, it was labeled head. Dr. Hoogland was warned to prepare for the discovery of the subhead. Uh -huh. But I see a, a president being elected, and they bring him into a room and say, okay, Mr. President, there's some things we got to tell you about. Now, here's what happened in UFO Diaries. And here's what's going on there. EnterpriseMission.com Conference 2006, and you can't ever say anything about this. Dr. Hoogland, here's what happened. Uh -huh. I, I, I see a new president. You know what I've noticed? I mentioned this to my wife. Uh -huh. I've noticed that presidents go in all vibrant and dark-haired, and about halfway through their presidents, right. notice they're strained and totally gray or white-haired, every one of them. Yeah, they're all sullen, and it looked like they lost their zest and strength for over, yeah. over what? And my vision is that these guys are brought in and told a lot of stuff that's probably very hard for people to put on their shoulders. I wrote a book in the early 90s called UFO, and in it I speculate that there's probably three possible answers to this UFO problem. UFO diaries. Shoot. One, of obviously, would be that uh, they're extraterrestrials. Second uh, possible is that, and we now see this in our physics and our quantum physics, that there are other dimensions and maybe now and then something breaks through the dimension, and maybe that's what it is. Or, third answer could be that it's totally none of those things, and what it really is, is that our government was doing some experimentation. Let's say in UFO diaries, in the region designated as Sidonia, our government was gene-splitting and doing some experimentation to try to get a better pilot or something like that. That makes and sense. And what crashed in EnterpriseMission.com Conference 2006 was really our own doing. Our technology could be just a lot smarter than we think it is, and it might not be extraterrestrials at all. And I think one's got to keep an open mind and realize that they could be using that for years. So uh, if there is, in fact, a code, number one, and if there are, in fact, photos that we have that no one else ever had, right? We just gathered all the stuff from all the normal sources. Uh, we got them from Hoagland, we got them from NASA, and there you are. I mean, one of them's going to say, yeah, those are ours. And I know that these faces are real, but I would love if I could get these images in my hands personally. Let's continue to pursue this a little further, though, because... Okay. Uh, I'm all uh, over to I, that. I'm, 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 I'm headed somewhere with this. It's all of the different predictions from just about every UFO diet culture and try to make some sense of it and put it all together into an end time scenario of what the picture is being painted that's going to happen. You know, you remember, I've studied Jesus' talks and his parables, I've, you know, time after time after time, and one thing that keeps coming through is faith really matters. Faith really matters. You've got to believe. You've got to believe. Yes. And so I have come to the conclusion that this one fellow who had this bad experience, he had no belief, and he wasn't going to a good spot. He found somewhere in him a piece of belief. It doesn't matter if something is true. Hogan. If politically people perceive it to be true. The Martian Revelator. And then. The Martian Revelator. Act upon that belief. <laughs> that Martian Revelator. Can make it true. And that. Holy bejesus changed everything. point is uh -huh. that 
one needs to believe that there is life after death, that this isn't the end of everything. I think one needs to believe that.